Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I need to just get some thoughts off my chest because I just finished the book Conviction by Denise Mina. And there are some things that happen in the book that I just did not understand. And I feel like I need to just discuss them with you guys. If any of you guys have read this book, because yeah, there were some plot points that I just did not understand and I am going to talk about them now. Now, a quick warning to you guys, if you have not read this book, I am going to be telling you many, many spoilers. I'm going to be talking about the ending. I'm going to be talking about some major plot points. So if you don't want to hear spoilers, then don't watch this video and come back and watch it after you've already finished the book. Also, I just want to say that I did really enjoy the book. For most of the book, I thought I was going to give this book five stars and I didn't for the reasons that I'm going to say. But I just want to put that out there that I'm not trying to trash this book because I had a great reading experience. I binged listened to the audiobook in like less than 24 hours. So I really enjoyed the book, but here are the things that I did not like that happened in this book. So first let's start at the beginning. So something that happens to the main character, Anna slash Sophie is so basically very early on in the book, like I think in the first few chapters, she finds out that her husband has been cheating on her with her best friend. And later on, we learn that not only have they been cheating together, but the like the best friend is now pregnant with the husband's baby. And like the main character gets over this fact in like a day. Like she throws a tantrum and has like kind of a really sad day where she's like suicidal and there's all this bad stuff and it's terrible, which is understandable because this is like a huge shock. And not only are they cheating on her, like her best friend and her husband are like, you know, together getting pregnant on the side, but not only that, but like immediately after telling her, they are like, yeah, we're going to peace out and go to Portugal and take the kids with us. So it's like, not only does she lose her best friend, she loses her husband and like her kids are being swept away. So I totally understand. Like it would be a very shocking, terrible experience. And I could understand how that could cause someone at least temporarily to be in the kind of a suicidal state of mind because that's a terrible situation. But what I completely did not understand is the fact that Anna, slash Sophie like gets over this fact within a day. Like by the end of the book, which I think in time of the book is only five days. She's like, yeah, Hamish, my husband, like he's not all bad. Like I actually still love him and he's a great guy. And like throughout the book, she peppers in all these things that she loves about her best friend. And she's like, my kids will love her. Like if anyone would have done this, like, Good thing it's her because she's great. Like, and I'm like, what? Like, how do you do that? Like, how do you go from like one day being, you know, smashing holes in the wall, like, almost ready to kill yourself over this to within five days, you're like totally over it. Was I the only one who thought that? I'm like, what the heck? Like that does not make any sense. Okay. So that was the first thing. Like I just completely did not understand and was the first thing that I had to take off probably half a point for that because I just, I feel like it spoiled the ending when the ending of the book was her like cuddling up with her family and Hamish again within just like days of this. I, I didn't get it. I think that's laudable that she did that and she is like setting a good example for her kids and everything. But yeah, that part just did not make sense to me. <sighs> okay. The other thing that I didn't understand was the ending. The ending, okay. First of all, I did not see it coming when it was revealed that Violetta was like the mastermind murderer. 
I didn't anticipate that. And I probably should have, um, because the whole part about like the two different size dresses and it was like a 38 and a 42 or whatever, like I should have seen it coming, but I didn't like, I just, and it didn't make sense to me. Like I, and I just, I just did not understand why Violetta would have killed her entire family. Like she basically orchestrated this whole thing where like she killed her brother, she killed her dad, she killed her like new stepmother's assistant, Dauphine, and then she kills her mom. And then she's like about to kill Gretchen. Like at the end of the book, she's about to kill Gretchen. And I'm like, I don't get it. Like, why? Why? Like, do you understand? Like the only thing that really makes sense to me is that she wants the money. Like she basically wants to take over this persona as Dauphine. And because she knows that once she kills Gretchen and everyone else is dead, that all of the money from Gretchen is going to be left to her. But, but I didn't really understand that because at the end, we basically learned that Violetta was able to completely like hoodwink Gretchen into like going along with all of this stuff. So I feel like Violetta, if all she was after was money, could have convinced Gretchen to give her money because Gretchen is a billionaire. Like I think it said that she was one of the richest people in the world. Like I'm sure if she was able to convince Gretchen to go along with all these murders, then she also could have convinced her to give her some extra cash, right? She could have taken the necklace. Like, didn't she just have this necklace given to her? Couldn't she have sold it or something for money? I, and then on top of that, I didn't understand why Gretchen just went along with all of it. Like why? Okay, so here's what I don't understand. So basically to recap the ending, Violetta essentially like mastermind these whole murders where she kills her dad and her brother on this boat and she convinced her new stepmom's assistant, Dauphine, to like come in place of her. And essentially she planted Dauphine in the ship so it would look like her. And then she got away in the life raft. Then she goes to Gretchen, who's like her new stepmom, who is a billionaire and like becomes buddy buddy with her and like convinces her to go along with it and not only go along with it and cover it up, but she basically convinces Gretchen to let Violetta basically disguise herself as Dauphine. So it's like the whole thing is covered up. Um, and she like assumes the identity of Dauphine. Like, why would Gretchen go along with that? I, I don't understand. Like, why would Gretchen harbor her like stepdaughter and like totally be okay that her new husband was just murdered? Like, wouldn't she like feel more loyalty towards her husband and her long time assistant who have been with her and like she supposedly loves and she has this like close connection with her assistant like wouldn't she have more loyalty towards them than her her husband's ex-wife's daughter like what like why like i don't get that like d did you guys understand that i i did not understand that part and the story kind of explains this away because Gretchen was like, oh, Dauphine was trying to help me because she didn't want me to take care of Julia. So just to back up for a second. So Dauphine is the assistant and Violetta is the stepdaughter. And essentially Violetta like became all buddy buddy with Dauphine. So she could like mastermind this whole thing. And I think she convinced Dauphine to tell Gretchen, or I don't exactly understand this part, but essentially Dauphine 
wanted to protect the billionaire Gretchen by not having to support the living expenses of Julia. So Julia is the mother of Violetta. Basically the arrangement in the marriage of Gretchen and Leon is Gretchen is supposed to pay the living expenses of Leon's ex-wife or ex like lover, ex-girlfriend. I don't, I forget if they were married or not, but essentially in this marriage arrangement, Gretchen has to continue to support the ex-wife because the ex-wife is the mother of his daughter, Violetta. Um, and so basically Gretchen is now responsible for taking care of the two of them. And so basically what happens is Dauphine says that she is trying to protect Gretchen and she doesn't want Gretchen to have to actually support them. And Gretchen like goes along with this and believes this, which I do not understand. Like, okay, Gretchen is a billionaire. Why would it be more important to her to go along with these murders than to just like pay the living expenses of one single woman and her daughter who live in like a little two bedroom apartment? That part just did not make sense to me. Like, I feel like the ending, Gretchen was just so dumb. Like she was just so, like she just went along with it so easily. I just, I did not understand that part. It did not make sense to me. Um, I don't know, I, I maybe I am just missing something. Like I legitimately think I may just be missing a major plot point where this was explained, but I don't think I am. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Did you, do you agree with my thoughts on these? Did I, did I miss something? If I did, let me know down in the comments because I would love to wrap my brain around what happened in the ending of this book. I just didn't understand. I didn't understand Violetta's motives, why she had to become some crazy murderer. I didn't understand why Gretchen just went along with it and didn't have any loyalty for her longtime assistant and just, like let this all happen. I didn't understand it. If you understand it, let me know down in the comments. I would love to have a discussion with you guys about it. As I mentioned, I did still love this book. I had a great reading experience. These are just my rants on like a few little things. Overall, I enjoyed the book and I would still recommend it to you guys, but I just had to get this off my chest because I just didn't understand the stuff. So yeah, that's it. If you like this video, subscribe for more like it and I'll see you later. Bye.